ಪ್ರಭವತಿ ಜಗತ ಅನೇಕ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ಪ್ರಕ್ಷೀಣ ಕ್ಲೇಶರಾಶಿ ವಿಷಮ ವಿಷಧರ ಅನೇಕ ಸುಭೋಗಿ ಸರ್ವಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರಸೂತಿ ಭೋಜಗ ಪರಿಕರ ಪ್ರೀತೇಷ ಸಿತ ವಿಮಲತನು ಯೋಗದೋ ಯೋಗಯುಕ್ತ ಯೋಗೇನ ಚಿತ್ತ ಪದೇನ ವಾಚ ಮಲಂ ಶರೀರ ವೈದ್ಯಕೇನ ಯೋಪಾಕರೋತ್ತ ಪ್ರವರ ಮುನಿ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಂಜಲಿರಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಆಹು ಪುರುಷಾಕಾರ ಶಂಖಚಕ್ರಾಸಿ ಧಾರಿಣ ಸಹಸ್ರಶಿರಸ ಶ್ವೇತ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಅನಂತ ನಾಗರಾಜ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಪಾತಂಜಲಮಹಾಭಾಷ್ಯ ಚರಕ ಪ್ರತಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಮನೋವಾಕಾಯೋಷಾಣ ಹರ್ತ್ರೆ ಅಹಿ ಪತ ನಮಃ ಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ್ಸೂತ್ರಕೃಚ್ಛಾಪಿ ನಿರ್ಮಲಂತ ಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣ ಧ್ಯಾತೀಪತೆರ್ನಿತ್ಯ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ನಮ್ಯಹಂ ಜಾತಿ ದೇಶ ಕಾಲ ಸಮಯ ಅನವಚ್ಛಿನ್ನ ಸಾರ್ವಭೌಮ ಮಹಾವ್ರತ ಶೌಚ ಸಂತೋಷ ತಪಃ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಈಶ್ವರ ಪ್ರಣಿಧಾನ ನಿಯಮ ಸೋ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದ ಸೂತ್ರ 
that concerned what is called the five yamas. Yama is the first <coughs> uh, anga, the limb of the Ashtanga Yoga of Patanjali. And among the yama, there are five of them. What is called ahimsa, the concept of non-violence. Uh, satyam, the concept of uh, being real in reality, truthfulness, not only in speech, but also in life and living. Then there is the concept of asteyam, not stealing, not taking something that belongs to another. Uh, brahmacharya, <clears throat> integrity in uh, relationships, uh, honesty in relationships. And uh, aparigraha, the concept of not grasping, not receiving more than we should, not receiving uh, from people we should not receive, etc. And we talked about how, why this yama is so important is because it so much interferes in the concept of our karma. And we are trying to reduce our karma so that we are going closer to freedom. But somehow or the other, these things keep coming back again and again. The next sutra is an extension of the yama where <clears throat> Patanjali is asking us to make some reflections about Yama. And uh, he gives two scenarios. One scenario is for normal people like us. We are normal people. We are living in society. We are living with family members. And we are living in certain countries that are defined by <clears throat> certain rules and regulations, some legalities and some boundaries especially. So <clears throat> for us, there is one set of exceptions that Patanjali is suggesting with regard to the Yama. <clears throat> and at the same time, there is <clears throat> another scenario he is presenting, which is for what is called Mahavratas, the people who are having the great, wow, the great commitment to uphold uh, the Yamas. And these are for extraordinary people. These are for usually people of a higher caliber in the spiritual path. And uh, we will uh, try to understand <clears throat> these. So what Patanjali says is with regard to any of the Yama, whether it is Ahimsa, Satyam, Asteyam, Brahmacharya or Aparigraha. There are four scenarios where we can make some exceptions. For example, what Patanjali says is Jati, Desha, Kala and Samaya. The word Jati <clears throat> means some kind of, let's say, description of our job. Now, oh, take for example, the example that Vyasa is giving in the commentary of the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali in his Vyasa Bhashya, he is saying, you take the example of a fisherman. He gives the same example. Now, the job of a fisherman is to catch fish. That's his jati. So, he cannot say, I will not catch fish because catching fish is ahimsa. Now his job is to catch fish, therefore he has to catch fish. So in such a situation, he is making an exception that he will catch fish, that minimum himsa he has to cause, because that's his job, that's his jati. But he will not create other forms of himsa, like for example, he will not kill a goat, or he will not kill a cow, or he will not kill other animals, or he will not hurt other people. But he will only restrict himself to the fish. So that is what is called jati. The jati determines his exception. The same way, for example, there is a soldier, a kshatriya. His, his jati to fight he cannot go to war and say, I don't want to fight. If he did not want to fight, he should not 
be a soldier the moment he accepts his job his jati as a soldier that gives him the exception that he can fight but the exception is or the rule of ahimsa is that he will fight only in the time of war only at a war but not elsewhere he cannot say i am a soldier i will punch anybody in the street that says ahimsa he only has to practice that ahimsa in that context for normal people this is what is the exception there is an exception for jati the same way you take an example of satyam <clears throat> now if a person's jati is a spy which is a, a job to be a spy that person cannot say i will speak the truth always he or she may get arrested and more importantly he or she is not doing dharma to their jati the dharma of the spy is to find information for the kingdom from other countries of potential threats of potential strategic plans and things like that so a spy has to lie but he will only lie for his jati he doesn't have to lie for other aspects of his life so that is what is called the exception of jati then comes the context of desha the context of desha what vyasa is saying the same example of the fisherman is the fisherman will catch the fish only in the desha that is not what is called an auspicious place for example <clears throat> there are rules for fishermen also that they can do fishing in public place like the ocean like a public lake like a public river etc but not in certain auspicious places <clears throat> for example every temple in india traditionally they used to have a big tank they used to have a tank if you go to mailapur you will see in kapaleshwara temple in front there is a huge tank it's sad that there is not much water now but usually there is a lot of water especially when the season is good now normally when there is a place of water there will usually be fish but the desha exception is that the fisherman must not catch fish in such a place he can practice the himsa of catching the fish in every other place but the ahimsa is not on this particular day on this particular place the desha where it is a holy place <clears throat> the same rule applies in certain rivers in rivers for example there is kaveri the great river in the south there are certain sections of the kaveri that are considered to be auspicious and holy where fishermen are not usually catching fish for example in front of shri rangam <clears throat> which is a very famous place on the banks of kaveri it's the there's a very great temple called ranganatha temple and uh, in this section fish cannot be caught the fisherman has to leave this space exclusive for the fish to be there the same way you go to lake manasarovar fishing is not allowed because manasarovar is supposed to be belonging to lord shiva so we cannot steal shiva's fish so you cannot take do fishing in manasarovar this is what vyasa says certain holy deshas you cannot fish so this is an ex exception for the fisherman at other places he can fish that's how he practices ahimsa contextually the same way <clears throat> the context of time kala jati desha kala vyasa is saying on the chaturdasha date that means on the 14th day of the moon you must not fish the same fisherman can catch fish on other days but not on the 14th day of the moon now some people may ask why the hell 14th day of the moon 
people may say this but there may be some astrological reasons but it's also very practical the ancients were very practical normally just before new moon or full moon comes the 14th day because usually the full moon or the new moon is the 15th day <clears throat> now normally if you observe <clears throat> the tide in the ocean on the 14th day of the moon whether it's before full moon or before new moon the waves are really really very very disturbing so for the safety of the fishermen they take that day as an exception so traditionally if you go you will see that they will not fish on the 14th day in their simple boats now we have all modern ships and boats we don't care because we can maneuver all these waves with because our ship is very large but traditionally they were going in little catamarans very small boat made of some wood and usually they had their row and there would be two or three people only not many people navigating and such seasonal uh, changes is very difficult so <clears throat> that's the kala exception of kala then comes the context of samaya circumstance now there may be a particular circumstance where he or the fisherman may have to make exception even if none of this other three are there for example if there is a case of death where there is no food and there is starvation and the only place that the fisherman can find some fish for this people is in a holy place like in front of Sri Rangam he has to make that exception because the circumstance of a drought of famine of life is forcing that we make that exception we cannot be fanatic we cannot be fanatic so there are certain rules like that there are certain exceptions because we are not normally living in a perfect world we are not normally living in a perfect world we have to make some of these exceptions and a minimum amount of uh, what do you call freedom or flexibility in these rules are needed depending on the circumstance you may be traveling through the forest an animal is trying to attack you you may have to be violent to the animal to kill that animal because you have to protect your life that is what is called the samaya dharma <clears throat> the circumstance to take surgery for example is very violent surgery is not uh, uh, a very peaceful process it's very violent it's cutting somebody's body it's a uh, himsa but you are not doing the himsa uh, in a purposeful manner you are doing it to save somebody's life now however nowadays many people are doing surgery for fashion purposes cosmetic reasons <coughs> that is not considered within the ahimsa procedure it is considered ahimsa it is not an exception but if you have let's say a heart attack and you need to do a surgery bypass surgery you have to do it that is a violence ahimsa which is called shastra chikitsa but you just want a more nice looking nose therefore you want to do surgery that's not considered Uh, an exception or an allowed rule that you can do himsa to your body this is himsa this is himsa and in modern time many such himsa is being done without people knowing that it is himsa because people don't realize the consequences of certain things the consequences of certain things that's why people don't understand a very big problem now is that many people are in <clears throat> are doing a lot of himsa to the yoga field there are many uh, western people who teach yoga and uh, they like to do whatever they want and they call it cultural appropriation actually it is cultural misappropriation it is not neither ahimsa nor satyam because drinking beer and doing yoga is not yoga drinking beer taking drugs and doing yoga is not yoga but they say oh we will do what we want this is what is called as white privilege 
If we do the same in the reverse manner, people will get very agitated if we are doing some, let's say, mantras during some other Western procedure. They are very agitated, but they want to take our yoga and bastardize it. But that is neither satyam nor ahimsa. And it's also not asteya because they're stealing something from our culture. This is a very great danger for yoga today. And I think that is a very important reflection for many of our Western yogis because many Western yogis like to talk with very great self-righteousness that they are very superior compared to our poor Indian yogis who, for whom these things are part of our life. It's a very important reflection and many times people come and try to lecture to our own Indian people about what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. Such people should have some deep reflection about the concept that Patanjali has talked about. When you take a philosophy, you have to take a philosophy as a whole. If you take only a fish out of water, it becomes dead. Whereas our Indian philosophy is like taking the fish with the container of water so that it's still alive. Indian philosophy is alive through daily life. It's not in a museum, but it's actually living in every house, in every home, in every temple, in every street, our philosophy is alive. Because we are taking the philosophy with the water. It's not like we are taking the fish out of water and making something out of it, like fish curry. We are actually living that philosophy in a daily way, consciously or unconsciously. So many of these topics are very important for our reflection and there are exceptions that are there that Patanjali is talking about through what is called Jati, Desha, Kala and Samaya which is very important because life is not perfect. Life is not going to be smooth. Life will throw a lot of challenges. Life will, is not always in our control. So we have to make some exceptions. We have to make some exceptions. We cannot not make some exceptions. This is why Patanjali is offering this kind of exception for normal people like us. However, for those who are called Mahavratas, like our Acharya, Shankaracharya, or Vedanta Deshika Acharya, or Parakalamata Swami, etc., they have taken the vow of sannyasa. For them, there is no exception because they have taken a commitment to elevate themselves to a higher spiritual platform. So for them, there is no exception. Whether it is Jati, Desha, Kala or Samaya, they should not worry about it. They have to follow all the Yama and Yama without exception, even if it is inconvenient, because they are Mahavratas. We are not Mahavratas, we are Alpavratas. It is a fact, because once you take family life into consideration, you have to make adjustments. You cannot be fanatic if you have a family life, because relationship with two people needs adjustments. But the moment you have family where you have one children, one child or two child children, or sometimes three, then many more adjustments have to be made, many more exceptions have to be made. We cannot be fanatic. So the first part of the sutra, the exceptions are for people like us. And the second part of the sutra, Mahavrat, Anavachinnaha Mahavratam, is for certain great people who make that commitment of a dedication to spiritual path where there is no exception. So this is the sutra which follows Yama, the sutra Jati Desha Kala Samaya Anavachinnaha Sarva Bhauma Mahavratam. Following the Yama is its counterpart called Niyama. Now Patanjali in the Yama is saying what things we should not do. This is what we discussed in the last week. Yama is about don't do certain things. Don't be like certain way like animals. 
Niyama is more like what we must do. And again, Patanjali is saying five important parts of Niyama. Ahimsa, sorry, Shaucha, Santosha, Tapaha, Swadhyaya, Ishwara Pranidhanani, Niyamaha. He talks about five very important attributes which are also very important to embrace when we are in the yoga, yoga path or life path, in the path towards reducing our suffering. One is called Shaucha. The word Shaucha comes from the word Shuchi. Shuchi means to be clean, to be pure. Now, purity is of two dimensions and this is what people don't understand. If you are not pure, your karma is uh, becoming affected. For example, water, if it's pure, it's water. Now you mix something in the water, you adulterate the water with some toxic things and you give somebody, you are bringing some in, in, in interferences with water and its function. Now the same way, our matter is considered pure. This is our sharira, which has bhuta and indriya, senses and elements. What's the definition of purity? Purity is when something remains itself and there is no adulteration. Now many people translate shaucha as I have to clean my body every day with soap. That's not shaucha at all. Because please remember in the time of Patanjali and Vyasa, there was no conveniences like having a bath every day. If they had water, they would have a bath. If they did not have water, they would have mantrika snana, a bath with mantras. So they were not talking about being pure as cleaning your body. What's the meaning of pure when we say pure olive oil? What does it mean? It means it's only olive oil, there's nothing else. When we say pure ghee, it means it's only ghee, there is no dalda mixed in that. The same way when we say shuchi, when we are clean, shaucha, when we are pure, it means we are remaining in our essence. If you are in your swabhava, you are pure. If you are not in your swabhava, you are impure. If you try to be like somebody else, that's impure. If you want to be your ego self, that's impure. Your family or society or friends or your own imagination wants you to be somebody, but by nature you cannot be that. That's not shaucha. Shaucha, purity means to be in your essence without any deviation. This is the biggest problem for modern people because we always want to be somebody else. All us Indians, we are dark skinned. We want fair and lovely cream to become fair. We be want to become more fair. All the Western people who are so fair, they go to tanning studios to become dark. We always want to be what we are not. That's not purity. Shaucha is accept your nature, accept your essence and be who you are at every level, physical level, emotional level. That's the other problem in modern time. We only want to deal with happy emotions. Oh, you're happy, okay. But if you are sad, if somebody passes, you have grief, nobody wants to deal with it. Okay, you grieve alone, I'll go somewhere else. People want to deal with things only when they are positive or when they are useful. That's the basic hypocrisy of this world. Shaucha is to be in that essence. I learned this very strongly when my father was dying in the last years. Many of his so-called students of long time 
would call and tell me, how is sir? I said, why don't you come and have a look? Oh, we don't want to see sir like that because we saw him so great. I said, that's nonsense because just because somebody is dying, it doesn't change the fact that he or she is your teacher. That's dishonesty. That's not shaucha. That's not purity. That means they want to give a show that they are a T student, but not really a student. Because if you are really accepting of a teacher or of a person, of a family, you will not make a differentiation of what state they are in. That's shaucha. Purity, acceptance of things as they are in yourself, in others. So that's why we are, we have to accept our true nature, our swabhava, as it is now. This part of the problem. We want to accept as it was before, but not now. It's what these so-called students said. Oh, we can accept sir like that, but not like this. That's nonsense. Because life is fully changing. Shaucha is to be as you are. If you are agitated, show you are agitated, it's okay. That's what is purity. If you are supposed to be an artist, be an artist. Don't try to be a, a doctor if you are an artist. Don't try to be an accountant if you are not good with numbers. It's not going to work. It, you eventually, that will interfere with your karma. That is what is called shaucha. Santosha, when you are yourself, you know that you cannot be something else. You cannot have something else. So you have to be content with what you can be, with what you have. I am a man, I cannot have child myself. I cannot be a mother. So I have to be content, santosha, that okay, I am accepting that God has given me this body as a male form. I cannot be a female form, I have to accept it. So santosha is the concept of contentment because the moment you don't accept yourself, starts discontentment. We always want to be somebody else. So we are comparing, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like this, I don't like that. And that's where we are stuck. Santosha. We are not happy to be who we are. This is essentially the fundamental thing that is wrong with human beings because we always are dissatisfied. We are always dissatisfied. And now we have avenues called uh, social media that is promoting our dissatisfaction. I think things like Facebook, Instagram and all this is giving people license to complain more than license to be useful. Whatever you say, people will find fault with you. You can never satisfy anybody. Now, <clears throat> I was just listening yesterday, my daughter showed me a YouTube video of a comedian from Chennai and he was saying some, the same idea. Apparently, he put a post on Facebook, mosquito, you have the right to bite me and go. It's okay. But please don't do that going, going, going sound in my ear. That's disturbing, especially I cannot sleep. When I'm sleeping, you bite me and go. But don't do this going, going, going sound. He's putting as a joke. He's a comedian. He's jati. He's a comedian. So he was saying some of the comments, Peta, people's whatever ethical treatment of animals. Mosquito is an animal. This is against animal rights. So people will find fault with whatever you put. You are happy, they are finding fault. You are unhappy, they will find fault. So the society has become so dissatisfied. That's why we are always finding fault with ourselves and others. That's why Patanjali reminds ourselves, be santosha. Be content with what you have and be content especially with what you don't have. Because please remember my friends, sometimes if we have something, we have the karma of that thing as well. We have the problems of that thing. So if we don't have some things, we don't have the karma of those things. So be happy with what you don't have also. Don't just be happy with what you have. Be happy with what you don't have. I was just talking today morning with a friend about how so many countries that are very, very wealthy, many wealthy countries are there in the world, Japan, uh, Scandinavia, Switzerland, all so many wealthy countries. Money is not a problem, products are not a problem, but they're all having the highest rate of depression, suicide, anxiety. 
Why? Because money is not going to give us happiness. Products are not going to make us happy. Are we happy and enjoying the product? That is what is the question. Many people have products lined up. But they're not enjoying that product. They're not enjoying the product. I'm seeing patients one to one. So many rich people come. They come with a very big Mercedes car which is costing like two crore rupees, which is so much for Indians. But they are not even driving it nor able to enjoy because they have all these problem, gastric problem, anxiety problem, stress problem, this, that. The poor driver who is probably earning 5,000 rupees per month, he is enjoying the Mercedes driving. He is so happy to drive it. Not the guy who is sitting behind who has the money. That's why Santosh, are we happy to enjoy what we have before trying to accumulate more and more things? That's what Patanjali says. And if we don't have these two, psychologically, we, there is a lot of toxins that are accumulated. That's why Patanjali says tapas. Tapas is the process of reducing the toxins in our body, emotions and our energetic structures. If you are not content, what do you do? You want to eat more. For example, there is a masala dosa. You are not satisfied. So you say, one more vada. You are still not satisfied. One more vada, sir. Then after that, you take one more coffee. You are not satisfied, so you are craving, you are taking more. Now, our poor metabolic system can only digest so much. So when we eat one masala dosa, two vadas and like two coffees. The metabolic system cannot digest. It will create what is called toxins in the body. Ama, word used in Ayurveda. So we have to do tapas to eliminate that toxins. The same with emotions. Many of us have emotional experiences that we don't let go. We are angry all the time. I'm so angry because this person hey, he did this to me. I'm so angry because... So we are not processing and letting go. We are continuing to stay with that. What will happen? Our system becomes toxic. Our system becomes toxic. You see so many movements in the world. It's very, it creates a lot of toxicity rather than lightness. So that's why Patanjali says, practice tapas. Eliminate toxins through proper diet, proper di lifestyle proper emotional attitudes so that what is toxic you let go what can be nourishment in one moment becomes toxic in another moment you take an apple or any fruit mango a banana any fruit at the time which is right it's nourishment you allow it to rot you eat it it becomes toxic at the right moment, it is nourishment. If you allow it to wait till it becomes rotten, it becomes toxic. The same banana, the same apple, the same food, the same with emotions. You are angry when something is happening. At that moment, it is appropriate. But at other moments, before or after, it's not appropriate, it is toxic. There are so many people who hold on to their toxic emotions forever, being a victim. And there are so many people who are anticipating problems and predict holding on to anger of something that has not yet happened. Oh, I know he will be like this. I know he will be like, she will be like that. So they are predicting already and becoming toxic and they are so angry. Anger, grief, sadness, disappointment, even happiness can become toxic at an inappropriate time. So, that's why Patanjali says, Tapaha is very important. Swadhyaya. Ask yourself who you are. Why you are here? What is your purpose? We have forgotten this basic question. Why are we here? I am not here only to deliver this lecture to you or eat, sleep and just watch some movies and just die one day. We are not here only for a simple purpose. We are all here for a dharma. Nobody is here by accident. 
so swadhyaya is find your dharma and get the appropriate resources to express this dharma whether you face obstacles or not it's not a problem because the moment you identify your dharma obstacles will come the moment you identify your dharma obstacles will come i'm not joking sometimes even the moment you make a commitment obstacles will come so that's why swadhyaya find your purpose and live your purpose and the reason i say this is because life is very unpredictable anybody can go like that within seconds you know it takes like 9 months for us to be born but life can go in like 1 second or less than 1 second it's very quick to disappear when you go what are you leaving behind not only for you but for others but also for this world so live life with a purpose what is priority find your priority find your dharma because if you keep chasing money or objects it's not going to work it's a very symbolic way this is demonstrated in some of our traditional indian cultural things that's why i said for us our philosophy is in daily life western people think it's very stupid and juvenile but we have meaning behind simple things we do when a dead person is uh, carried around the village there are two reasons one is to inform all the people about how that this person is dead but also there's another symbolic reason when they are carrying the person on a some kind of an equipment that is like a stretcher they are usually covering the body but hands are always free it's a message to the people that when we go we are going empty handed so don't be busy accumulating things because when you go you go with nothing so this is the depth of our culture so that's the swadhyaya for us when i go what am i leaving behind do i just leave some products some money in the bank which anyway all the family will fight for they'll all fight for inheritance i want this i want that i want this i want that and eventually the person who makes a lot of money out of this is the lawyer so what are we here for not just that purpose we are here for something else swadhyaya is the process of discovering that purpose finding the resources to express that purpose and expressing it because some dharma will require some resources finally ishwara pranidhana patanjali is using this word the second time in the second chapter and the third time so far in the first two chapters in the second chapter he is strongly reminding that ishwara pranidhana is sarvakriyanam paramagurav arpanam don't do actions as if it's for you or your ego doing it do all actions as if it is a service to the highest teacher paramagurav arpanam as if it is an offering to the highest teacher there are multiple layers of meanings one meaning is very simple you are not in control very simple what happens in our life is not in our control what happens is not in our control anything can happen so accept that don't be doing things for an egoistic purpose because what you do and what will be the consequence need not always be in your control you can do your actions but the consequence need not be in your control that's what krishna also says in the bhagavad gita do your action from your heart because the ultimate teacher is the divine and the divine is not in a temple the divine is in your heart that's what they're saying whatever you do do it from your heart 
and when you say do action is of two types one is giving giving is also an action receiving is also an action there are many people who want to do for others but don't want to receive for themselves they think that receiving is a problem i will be obligated if i receive that's part of the problem receive as if that offering from another person is for the divine in your heart don't receive it for your ego receive it as if it's an offering for the divine in your heart that's the problem today people are of two types there are some people who only want to give but not receive and then there are some people who only want to take but not give they both are problems the ideal thing is to give and take give and receive offer and receive so we must offer without expectations that is ishwara pranidana when you are doing it from your heart you are offering without expectation i offer something to somebody help assistance or a gift or a present it's without expectation that the other person will receive it well or not receive it well or will use it or not use it we don't have control over that the same way when we receive we must not receive with guilt oh if i receive this i am obligated to this person what does this person want receive it as if it is for the divine that is what is the meaning of ishwara pranidana parama guru arpanam whether you are giving give it to the divine in the other when you receive receive it for the divine in you the parama guru the great divine is not in a temple church or mosque only it's also in our heart so receive it there give from there that is what is ishwar pranam this is what we forget we are doing it for ego purposes we give or receive for ego purposes sometimes you go to temple the people give donation tube light they give and every tube light will have one sticker which says donated by somebody 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 <clears throat> don't do it like that for purpose of visibility do it from your heart there is no need for anybody to know that you are giving there is no need to fa- feel bad that you receive ishwara pranidana these are the five niyamas because their role also is very very important in yoga because when we follow this our karma will also get reduced because if you don't act from a place of ego your karma is reduced if you act from a place of ego your karma is increased now the theory of karma starts with shaucha purity the theory of karma which yoga accepts and that's where the cultural misappropriation also happen you can't say i don't believe in karma i only believe in headstand drinking beer that's not how it works yoga has been presented for reducing our karma shaucha purity your body your mind your emotional structure your constitution that you are born in this country in this time in this family is because of your karma vasana you have been created for because of this kind of karma now if you are not shaucha and you want to be somebody else you are interfering in the karmic theory so if you are meant to be a doctor you should be a doctor you should not try to be a scientist an artist or an accountant if you are meant to be a spiritual person that's what you have to be otherwise if you are not pure in that you are interfering with the divine plan of your karma and you cannot change your karma by saying i'll do something different i'll do whatever i want freedom is not doing whatever we want freedom is to flow along with the flow of karma my father always used to give this metaphor a river is free when it's flowing but the river is always restricted by its banks if the banks were not there the river will disappear very quickly so the banks allow the river to flow long towards its final destination so we need some kind of boundaries we can't do whatever we want that boundary is what 
we have to find out and that boundary is not the same for each of us because depending on our dharma the boundaries will be different that's the very important theory of karma that many people today forget yoga is very strongly talking about karma klesha karma vipaka ashayai aparamrishta purusha vishesha ishvara the first time patanjali talks about karma but it's not the only time he talks about karma klesha mula karma ashaya drishta adrishta janma vedaniya another time he talks about so the theory of karma is inbuilt in the sutras we cannot remove and say oh i don't want karma but i want to do yoga it's you are doing exercise so this is what is very important my friend and yama and niyama or somehow helping us define these boundaries so that we can use the remaining six angas of yoga to allow our potential to evolve that is what is the place for yama and niyama we cannot remove the yama and niyama because yama and niyama are for supporting our other six angas the other six angas are time and place bound practices i can always say i do asana from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock 8 o'clock to 8:30 i will do pranayama i can put time limit for these things meditation okay i will do ga sandhya vandana morning meditation to the sun at this time 6 o'clock we can say these kind of things but for yama and niyama it is not time bound or place bound it is something that is sustained all 24 hours of a day day after day you cannot say sunday vacation for yama and niyama you can make sunday vacation for asana or pranayama ah, i will sleep late on sunday i work so hard okay excused even though it's not really excused from patanjali's point of view we can excuse that but yama and niyama don't have holiday yama and niyama don't have holiday at all they have to be always there but the problem with yama and niyama is we cannot really have a standardized yama and niyama for everybody all the time depending on our dharma depending on the desha kala samaya etc the yamas and niyamas can change so these are some reflections about the sutra shaucha santosha tapaha swadhyaya ishvara pranidhanani niyamaha namaste my friends